Hey, welcome. I'm very excited today to go through some of the new features in PolyUmod and M-Calibration version 6.1. Um, so in this version, we have introduced uh, all kinds of cool stuff that I will go through here today. Um, and um, the first thing, though, is you can download this new version already now. It's available on the polymerfem.com uh, website. And uh, just go get it. Um, the, the major improvements in PolyUmod are listed here. So the new platforms we support are listed at the top, particularly their new versions. So Abacus, Ansys, and Abyss Dyna that we are supporting now. The 2021 versions of Abacus or Ansys uh, would work. And if you are a PolyUmod user with Abacus and you run mainly on the Windows computer, then you should really get the new version because we have made some changes to mix PolyUmod with Abacus on a Windows computer to run much faster in some cases, even up to two times faster. Uh, so get, go get a shot, try it out, and I think you will find it to run faster on, on that platform. Um, we also added a new environmental variable that you can use to specify the location of the license server for PolyUmod RLM license. Um, for M calibration, there are a number of new uh, features. I will go through them here. Uh, as you notice, once you start uh, the M calibration application, there is a new icon on the left, tech support. Um, some people get a little confused at how do we ask for help? Um, the preferred way for us now is to click on that icon or simply just open a web. Uh, in your uh, email program and write an email to support at polymerfm.com. And that's uh, how our support team will uh, get it and we will respond to you by email. So that's an easy way to remember it now since we have an icon in the main window of M calibration for you to use. Um, some of the key new features is that we have started to go back to the basics and make sure we support all of the basic models. And we will continue that through the year here. Um, Start with um, Abacus Hyperelasticity. We support all Abacus Hyperelastic material models internally within M calibration, both uh, the compressible and incompressible versions of them. So you can try that out. Here's a Van der Waals prediction with an incompressible implementation. They all work really well. Um, we also uh, support uh, Abacus Hyperelasticity with Mullins damage. So you can combine any of the hyperelastic models with or without compressibility with Mullins damage. It works great, all with the internal M calibration solver that makes it super fast, of course. Um, we also have supported now all linear viscoelasticity models in Abacus with any of the hyperelastic models. So any hyperelastic model, you combine it with a linear viscoelastic model, the Prony series model, uh, and that works both incompressible or compressible material representations. They all work really well now. Um, we made some other changes to the Abacus uh, linear viscoelastic model. This is something we introduced for ANSYS linear viscoelasticity uh, last year. That is, we added two more parameters at the end of the PRONI series uh, list of parameters here. So what that means is that you have much more control now of what you want these uh, values to sum up to. In, in, in Abacus uh, representation here, the G terms, for example, are the... the the, the, relax, the relative relaxation moduli, and uh, they need, if you sum all of them up, they have to be less than one. And if uh, that, that's how you specify how much of the stress actually relaxes. And the, that can be a little bit problematic uh, when you optimize the parameters. So we have now introduced a parameter at the end that says, what should they add up to? And if you add these up together here, you get 0 0.9, but you said it should be 0 0.5. So that means that M calibration would scale these back so the sum of them will be 0 0.5, and the ratio of them will give you the relative value as indicated in the equations to the left here. That works for both the, the shear relaxation and the bulk relaxation. So this is, it will help you tremendously when you calibrate these models in terms of uh, getting the behavior that you like. So we, we really uh, are excited about that. Um, we also have implemented, uh, or started to implement the Abacus Hyperelastic models combined with linear viscoelasticity and Mullins uh, behavior uh, through internal solvers. That works mostly now, uh, so you can try it out. And um, we will continue to look at that uh, as we move forward because there's some small differences between the M calibration implementation and the Abacus implementation. Um, 
We have added support, internal calibration support and solver support for the LS Dyna Hill Foam. So this is also called the Hill Store Ockers Foam model. So you can run this very quickly. It's part of the internal solver now. We also added a template for the Abacus PRF model for the temperature dependence. So a lot of people have a temperature dependent PRF model. They want to calibrate it and they always ask me, like, how do I do that? Well, the way to do it now is that you calibrate a PRF model for each temperature and then you combine them very quickly using this template here. So you click on this icon and then the M calibration will ask you for the files from each temperature and it will combine it for you and you're good to go. And we have the similar strategy for the ANSYS Bergstrom Boyce model with temperature dependence. You com first calibrate it for each temperature and then you, com you can combine it very quickly using this new template uh, for ANSYS. Uh, BB model. Um, we added internal support, uh, solver support for the Abacus Holsafer Gasser Ogden model. It's an anisotropic hyperlastic model. We already had support for similar anisotropic hyperlastic models in ANSYS earlier, but we added this now for Abacus. Um, another feature that, that is really useful is if you work with DMA data and you want to calibrate a material model, it could be linear viscoelastic or nonlinear viscoelastic. Um, Sometimes you get a DMA file that contains a lot of rows of data with different frequencies, strain amplitudes, or, or something like that. We, we now added the ability to change the size of such a file. You can resample it by specifying how many rows you want. And that can be very useful because um, it takes a while to run these calibrations without the ability to downsample them initially, and then you come back to the full data set towards the end of the calibration procedure. Um, another feature that we added was the ability to interpolate data in the data tab, not only in a linear interpolation, but using a logarithmic interpolation. That's particularly useful when you work with DMA data that has sort of, you want the, the frequencies, for example, to be logarithmically spaced out, but it could be useful for stress relaxation or creep, et cetera, as well. So that's now an option. Um, uh, we also noticed that some of the graphs uh, were kind of weird looking when you turn on log scale uh, So in previous versions. So we fixed that. So now the log scale plots uh, will be much uh, more uh, prettier. There will be actually a little bit more logic behind it to add uh, that. So uh, that's very useful both for DMA data when you have frequency scanning many, many decades of frequencies, but also if you do stress relaxation or creep we have time that maybe scans a very long time period. Um, those are the cases where I typically use a log scale, and now log scale plots will look much better than before. Um, we, we started to add the ability to have some of the parameters that you want to optimize to be in, not in lin scale optimization, but log scale. So the parameter is actually log scale. And some material models are better suited for that. Some parameters in the, uh, for example, the the ANSYS Bergstrom Boyce model, the, there's one parameter there that really should be in log scale when it's optimized because it's it can vary over very large from 10 to the minus 6 to 10 to the minus 10 or 10 to the minus 20. So like it's it's not suitable necessarily for lean scale optimization. The log scale would be better. So we started to add that. It's a feature that's available and we're still playing with it to see how well it works. But that's something you can take a look at if you're interested in it. Um, and, and, and a lot of other changes too. Uh, some of them are listed here. Um, I'm not going to go through this whole list, but a lot of improvements, a lot of bug fixes, a lot of little tweaks here and there. Uh, really think you should go and download the latest version of both M calibration and PolyUmod if you want to use these uh, softwares. They will get better and better. And the way you get the software is you just click on the support thing in the menu bar and you click software download and you download the software. Um, so that's it. Thanks for uh, watching and let me know if you have any questions.